A huge early morning fire in Oakland has created commuter chaos. It shut down all BART service between the East Bay and San Francisco. Live team coverage ahead on Mornings on 2. Complete Bay Area news coverage starts right now. This is KTBU Mornings on 2. Well, good morning to you. Welcome to Mornings on 2. I'm Dave Clark. Good morning. I'm Tori Campbell. It is Thursday, June 14th, and we begin with developing news that is throwing the morning commute into a huge mess. A building fire next to the West Oakland BART station has shut down BART service between Oakland and San Francisco, and that's forced thousands of commuters to look for other options to get to work. We have live team coverage. Sal Castaneda is following the traffic impact. Claudine Wong is talking with weary commuters. But first, Tara Moriarty is live at the command center. What are they telling you about how long this could last, Tara? Well, unfortunately, Tori, we're in sort of a holding pattern right now because PG&E actually has to turn off the main gas line in order for arson and fire to get inside of the fire. pg and &E is telling uh, the fire department they need crews to actually cool it down in order for them to turn off the gas. So we are sort of at a standstill. And if you look behind me, uh, you can see the water sort of dripping there. Some hot spots uh, still burning. And above me, uh, the BART tracks that are still, um, that are melted from the fire and uh, are now shut down. This is video you will only see on two taken by the first unit to respond to the scene here off 7th and Mandela Parkway. It's right near the West Oakland BART station. Flame shot 150 feet into the air. The fire spread out over two blocks. It raged for a half hour before crews were able to get a handle on it. It destroyed the five story senior center under construction, some cars, street signs and the BART tracks. You know, there are two main issues. Uh, one is the electrical um, situation, and um, that's a, a bit complicated because there are very high uh, voltage lines that we need to make sure are safe to re-energize. And then the other is there's two poles that have been damaged by the fire that are in danger of falling on the tracks. So a third agency needs to come and remove those poles. Now, this is an overhead view of the scene where, again, hot spots are still visible. No one hurt in the fire, but 62 firefighters had to tackle this massive fire. Again, if you need to use BART this morning, there will be no trains running between Oakland and San Francisco for hours. The agency is recommending commuters use AC Transit or the ferry service because they're scrambling to get a bus shuttle in place. Now, we want to throw a number up on the screen here for you. It's 510 238 4031. That is the number for fire investigations. They are trying to figure out if this is a case of arson and want anyone who noticed any people in the area of 7th Street and Mandela Parkway around 2 o'clock this morning to give them a call. I'm live in Oakland. Right now we're going to head over to Sal Castaneda to see what the roadways are looking like and I can imagine it's a headache out there. Sal? It sure is, Tara. Uh, this morning's commute is really terrible at the Bay Bridge where a lot of people are just taking the car into San Francisco and you can see from our news chomper too that this backup extends for a good long time this is almost as if there had been a major crash on the bridge but really what it is is people who have heard about the BART system not taking them into San Francisco and getting into the car that's what a lot of people have had to do and we have a big backup some of those middle lanes for fast track aren't as congested as the outside lanes but still there is a big backup that stretches way beyond the MacArthur maze and into San Francisco and on the bridge it actually is not all all that bad there's a little bit of crowding there but the backup getting to the bridge is very very slow now I want to check out the other side San Francisco northbound 101 traffic looks good and so far there is heavy traffic on the San Mateo bridge but unfortunately getting there on 880 is very very slow and I also want to mention there's a crash on 37 at 29 uh, that has slowed traffic down on 37 in the eastbound direction right there I want to move the maps all the way down to the South Bay just to check on the South Bay here and we're off to a decent start, so the South Bay not having as much wear and tear on it because of this BART uh, situation. So at 7.05, let's go to an alternate route that people are using, and that would be getting on a bus into San Francisco. Uh, KTVU's Claudine Wong is there in downtown Oakland with some long lines. Claudine? Absolutely, Sal. It's a mess down here. I wanted to take a look at this bus. This bus is actually headed to San Francisco, but when it pulled up uh, to this line of people waiting, uh, there were already quite a few people on 
board, which makes it very difficult for any of these folks to, to get on board. How long have you been standing here? 45 minutes. 45 minutes. So when you saw this bus pull up and it was I just full, knew. Oh, God. We're not oh, even going to get on. How, what time are you normally in the city? Seven. seven. I'm at work yeah. at a quarter to seven. You're yeah. at work at a quarter to seven. And what time did you guys get to the BART station this morning? I got there probably at 6.05. 6.05, yeah. and what did you hear right away? Which station? I didn't even hear it on BART. I heard it on the radio. They said to get off on MacArthur or 19 to get a bus, and this is the second bus we're not going to get on. And it's been how long you've been waiting probably here? Probably an hour, 45 minutes to an hour. An hour. And you're actually in better shape because if we take a look, I want to take you guys all the way down and around this corner because people are starting to get a little frustrated because an hour and only two buses, two buses, and take a look at that line. That stretches all the way down Broadway, uh, and it, it just on keeps on going. I see another bus actually headed in our direction. That's the third bus, so maybe these bus bitches are getting a little bit better because uh, we've been waiting a long time. I asked the supervisor out here uh, how long until these buses start coming regularly, and she said she just doesn't know. They are trying to work these buses in and around this area to get all these folks into the city, but keep in mind these buses hold about 50 maybe 60 people if you're lucky and so uh, when you're talking about a line like this we're thinking maybe 10 15 buses of people that you got to get out of here uh, so it looks like this bus that we're looking at the other one that pulled up was full this one looks like it's empty which will be a big relief for the folks up here i want you to take it back up here because you talked about the open we talked about those people who are uh, maybe a little extra traffic people coming in uh, on the bridges there's some people up here that we just passed we didn't get to talk to uh, but i know look this one's empty, right? Uh, yes, it's empty. So, so and yeah. you're going to the open. Yes. And you came from, uh, came from Davis. We left at 4:45 a.m. And you've got your passes. You just yeah. need to get there. Yeah. And you get needed to get to see Tiger, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're gonna get on this bus. I'm gonna get out of your way because I don't want to get uh, in your way. But again, uh, this is only the uh, third bus they've seen this morning since these problems started. Uh, these folks want to get on this bus. They want to get into the city. It is not an easy ride. It looks like they will have more seats on this bus. Uh, but again, seats already taken. I asked that supervisor where else people are getting on. They're getting on at 12th. So this may be the second stop for some of these buses. It is going to be a very, very, very long commute this morning. Live here in Oakland, Claudine Wong, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Yeah, certainly will be. All right, thank you, Claudine. Great job there. And we'll check back for updates throughout the morning. Of course, we will return also to the fire scene throughout the morning for live updates. And uh, also, we'll be checking traffic because there may be other impacts uh, on other parts of the road as people try to find other ways to get across the bay. And uh, we will also be checking on how HG Transit is helping commuters this morning. We'll have the latest on our website. And you can also get more information that will be sent to your mobile device at ktvu.com. Time is now 708. Not the news. San Francisco police busy searching for suspects in two separate overnight shootings. One person was killed. Three others were hurt. The first shooting was about 1030 on Silver Avenue near Elmira Street. Investigators say one person was killed. Another was critically wounded. A third victim is expected to survive. Now, the second shooting happened a short time later on Cameron way right near Candlestick Park. Investigators say there's one victim, but we don't know how his injuries, the extent of the injuries. We still don't know if those two shootings are connected. All right, we're going to switch gears right now to some really good news. Giants fans are still celebrating this morning after Matt Cain threw the first perfect game in Giants history. On the ground, Arias from deep third. a long throw from third, but his teammates went wild along with the crowd at AT&T Park. Kane retired 27 straight batters, striking out a career-high 14 in a 10-0 win over the Astros. And he says the experience was just unreal. I literally felt everybody on the mound with me. I mean, it was, it was, it was going. The whole, whole, whole stadium was electric right then. I mean, it was, wow, it was unbelievable. This up. Kane got a little help in the seventh inning. Oh, look at that dive. Gerger Blanco made a great diving catch to help preserve the 22nd perfect game in Major League history. That is amazing. And Giants fans who were there can't believe they saw an historic game.
And how about that for luck? 42,298 fans celebrating as they left the ballpark last night. Only one other Major League perfect game matched Matt Cain's 14 strikeouts. The fans of all ages knew they were at something special, one of the greatest games ever pitched. Hey. Best game I've ever been to. 10-0? Like, Come on. Like, best game, best game, by far, by far. Go back to game. Oh yeah, the excitement really built all through the game, and towards the end, fans were, as you can imagine, hanging on every pitch, and then they finally just erupted as that last play of the game made it all official. Now, on our Channel 2 website, KTVU.com, we have reports about the moments after the game. AT&T Park just went to a new level because Matt Cain pitched an historic, perfect game. We're not done with sports happening now. Golfers are stepping into the tee box for the first round of the U.S. Open in San Francisco. The powerhouse threesome of Tiger Woods, Phil Mickelson, and Bubba Watson. Some say this trio, no surnames necessary, set to start in about 25 minutes. The Open will be a challenge for even the best players. Most of the fairways are slanted. Some say the first six holes are the hardest of any major. So uh, very exciting out there for, uh, for a lot of golfers. A lot of trouble, though, for people trying to get yeah. to the U.S. Open, as, as we saw in Claudine's report. We know. Yeah. Well, Tori, time now, 7-11. Let's check the weather for this. Steve is here with the forecast. All right, thank you very much, uh, Dave Tory. And, uh, well, ferries will be running full today, I imagine, along with uh, had a nice tweet from the, from the Bay Bridge. said, man. It's, it's heavy on me today. It's crowded, and for good reason, for all the delays today. But the weather's already starting to see the fog burn off. Fog or sun, and then fog, then sun for parts of the bay. But sunny and warm or hot inland, depending on your location. Since my forecast area seems to go from the Oregon border down to Brawley, <clears throat> it'll be hot for some <clears throat> inland. Excuse me. We do have 60s on the coast, 70s, or around 80s. But tomorrow, we'll start that big warm-up. In fact, you've probably heard by now, it looks to be very, very warm to hot. On Saturday, some of that fog will get wiped out with a north-northeast wind. So today we have some fog, but it'll be decreasing over the next couple of days. Near 100 degrees inland, high fire danger will also be with us. 50s on the temps. I'm losing it. <clears throat> I'm losing it. Okay, here we go. High pressure builds in. It's going to be warm to hot again by the coast. 60s or 70s, inland 80s to 90s. And then we'll see this really start to get very warm, orange and red as we head to Friday and also Saturday. So a breezy afternoon, but still lots of sun. I think everybody's in on that. 80s, 90s. Depending on your location, 80s could be in the upper 80s to low 90s or 60s and 70s closer to the coast and bay. Uh, 90 Gilroy, 79 San Jose, 78 Santa Clara, 76 Sunnyvale, 60s, 70s on the peninsula and along the coast. The big news will be over the weekend when it'll be sunshine, it'll be hot and windy. Looks like cooler weather returns by Monday. All right. Thank mm -hmm. you, Steve. It is 713 violence against peaceful observers who attack U.N. vans as they try to enter a town in Syria. Also, California Democrats say they've got a plan, their solution to the state budget gridlock. But is it enough to meet Friday's deadline? Good morning. Huge traffic jams getting to the Bay Bridge because of BART service suspension from the East Bay to San Francisco. More on what you can do to get in and out of the city. Now 7.15, well, a team of United Nations observers, they are now in the Syrian town of Haffa, just a day after government troops said they regained control of the area from rebel fighters. Yesterday, supporters of Syrian President Assad attacked UN vans trying to get to Haffa. Look at these pictures. The crowd threw rocks. They hit the vans with sticks and metal rods. Now, as the vans turned to leave, then they were fired on. No UN observers were hurt. Well, five months before Election Day, there's already a big face-off today in Ohio. Today, both President Obama and Mitt Romney will give dueling campaign speeches about the economy in that battleground state. KTVU Scott McFarland is reporting now. These speeches are scheduled just minutes apart. Scott? In the same state, Dave, just minutes apart, one in Cleveland, one in Cincinnati, and Mitt Romney already trying to step on President Obama's economic message today, releasing this new ad, which criticizes the president's gaffe from last week in which he said the private sector of the U.S. economy is doing fine. There's the ad on your screen. At the same time, the White House press secretary taking on Mitt Romney, saying the Republicans don't have a strong economic plan of their own. There's no sort of... Uh alternative idea being proposed unfortunately by uh, Republicans and and I think that is part of the part of the debate that we'll have in the fall 
A major speech is how the president's speech is being billed today in Ohio. Fellow Democrats have been urging him to hone, to step up his economic message. Mitt Romney, recognizing how important Ohio is going to be in the election, making three stops in the state today. One near Cincinnati, one near Columbus, and like the president, one near Cleveland. Live in Washington, Scott McFarland, KTVU Channel 2 News. 717, California's Democratic leaders say they will schedule a vote on their latest budget plan before tomorrow's deadline. That's even though Governor Jerry Brown has not yet said whether he'll sign it. Assembly Speaker John Perez says the lawmakers are on the same page as the governor over how to close the state's $15.7 billion shortfall. Democratic leaders say their plan meets the governor's criteria for a balanced budget, but makes smaller cuts to welfare programs. All right, time now, 718. We have major commute problems this morning. Sal, your hands are full today. They are full. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, we are looking live at a picture from News Chomper 2 of BART workers up there repairing the damage from the fire that was close to these BART tracks in West Oakland. We just heard from BART. They say that partial service will be restored by this afternoon, and they're hoping for full service by 5 o'clock tonight. That just came across from a BART spokesman to us, so they're working as fast as they can. Now, meanwhile, uh, the BART service is uh, not uh, working between San Francisco uh, and the East Bay and the other way around. Let's go to the MacArthur Maze. Uh, now traffic very slow at the Bay Bridge this morning uh, because of this. Now you will see that traffic is very, very slow all the way to the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. Also this morning, uh, the San Mateo Bridge, Dumbarton Bridge. San Mateo a little bit busier than normal getting across the peninsula. Uh, not all that bad, but you're going to see more people on it, likewise for the Dumbarton Bridge. Let's go to Steve. All right, Sal, thank you. Fog is burning off sooner already. It'll be cool to mild to warm to hot, uh, depending on your location. If you don't have any sea breeze, then it'll be hot. It'll be in the 90s. Otherwise, 70s and 80s. Uh, the big news will be on Saturday when the wind turns north-northeast, and it looks like we'll get a rapid warm-up into the really hot category, maybe that Fresno kind of hot. 50s on the temps here, low to mid. Uh, some areas cooled down yesterday, some warmed up. I'll tell you, I'm just I'm throwing in the towel. If you're in the sun, it'll be warm to hot. If you're far enough inland, it'll be warm to hot. If you're by the coast, it'll be cool to nice. Fog, sun, warm, breezy afternoon. Uh, still getting a westerly breeze right now, but that's expected to turn more northerly later. So 60 to 90 degrees in temperatures. Then tomorrow with some patchy fog, then start to warm up fast. And Saturday and Sunday look breezy, windy, and warm with high fire danger. All right, thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. It is 720. Obviously, more, much, much more on the big yeah. trouble for BART riders and, in fact, the whole Bay Area commute. A huge fire in West Oakland has stopped BART trains traveling across the Bay between Oakland and San Francisco. We've just learned it is an all-day problem. There's been a little major problem earlier this morning, but they're working on that and they're trying to resume service as soon as possible. Okay, Stay tuned. We'll continue our team coverage, live coverage of this morning commuter meltdown. Seven twenty-two. continuing coverage right now on our developing news. An early morning fire at a construction site has turned into a commuter nightmare right now. This was at a senior center that was under construction very close to the West Oakland BART station. So right now, BART service is shut down across the bay. Now, it's important to mention BART is still running in the East Bay, like from Bay Point to Lafayette, and in the West Bay from Colma to Embarcadero, for example, but you just cannot travel between Oakland and San Francisco, and that's causing a lot of problems. KTVU's Claudine Wong is live at the 19th BART station, 19th Street BART station, where a lot of people are waiting to be shuttled into San Francisco, and they've been waiting a long time, Claudine. They are, and these buses aren't coming in a regular fashion, and some of them coming are full. So I want to take a look, or give you a look at the situation here. That's the front of the line. But I want you to take a look at where this line goes, because the look on people's faces when they see the end of this line is unbelievable. Take a look as it goes all the way down the block, uh, as far as our eyes can see, and that line keeps growing as people head over here trying to get a bus into San Francisco. I want to talk to this gentleman. I'm going to walk you down here because you're not actually even in line. Uh, when you walked up here, what did you think when you saw this? Oh, uh, no, I, I'm actually in line. I'm trying to get to work to the city, too. But Where is, uh, where is your place in line? I'm, I'm all the way at the end. <laughs> but you were taking pictures. Do you want to show your boss yeah. that you might be yeah, a little late? Yeah, I'm, so she believed me. You know what I mean? I don't know if she believed that. I told him that was a fire on BART, but 
see this line, it's pretty epic. How long do you think it's going to take you to get in? I'm calling in. I'm going home. You're going home. You're giving up. Done. You're giving up. Done. <laughs> well, at least you can do Thank that. You. All right. Good luck to you. Uh, all the rest of these folks are trying to be patient as they uh, wait to see if they're actually going to make it in. I can tell you, we've been here since before 6.30 this morning, and we've seen three buses come. Keep in mind, each of these buses hold 50 to 60 people, and a lot of these buses that have been coming have been full. So uh, I talked to the supervisor out here, and I said, when are they going to send you other buses that aren't full? She said, look, they're coming from other locations. Uh, they're picking up people here. They're trying to squeeze as many people in as they can, but obviously it's very difficult. And so the folks who are waiting here are just going to have to keep on waiting until they get enough uh, buses over here to bring them in. The good news is, as you just heard, that some of these people you have been talking to, they said, look, I'm worried about getting in. I'm also worried about getting home. It looks like they may be able to get home if BART does restore service like they just told us they were going to by this evening, but uh, that does remain to be seen. So the line just continues to grow. Literally, people just keep coming across the street, getting in line. Uh, how long it'll take to get to this line, it's just impossible to say because uh, we've been watching and waiting. We show you two buses in our last uh, report. Uh, we haven't seen a bus since. So uh, buses moving through here, trying to get people to their destination. It's not happening quickly people getting a little frustrated out here live in oakland claudine wong ktvu channel two news yeah claudine i like what that guy said the line is epic i think that's epic. it yes it is it is unbelievable and mm -hmm. it just keeps growing and growing and growing we can't even see the end of it wow all right well uh, like that young man did might be good just to call it a day and head home all right thank you claudine well there is continuing coverage of this story throughout mornings on two and coming up at 7 30 reporter kara lou with a witness in fire zone where this all started what he saw and heard. All right, Tori, time now, 726. Sal, you and News Chopper 2, you're going to try to help them as much as possible, right? You know, we've been looking at, I even tried to go to the East Bay Ferry uh, website, and their site has crashed. So I think a lot of people had that, uh, you know, in inclination. I go to eastbayferry.com, and it's just not uh, letting me bring it up. I've tried on several computers, so I think they're probably having a bad morning over there. Let's go out and take a look at uh, the uh, commute here on 880 northbound. Uh, you could see traffic very, very slow coming out of Oakland and also very slow uh, this morning on 580 getting to the MacArthur Maze, uh, the big backup at the Bay Bridge Toll Plaza. Also this morning we're looking at some other things here. The traffic in the South Bay has been happily normal. It is slow here and there, but it has not been affected by all this uh, craziness in the East Bay. 101 is a little slow and so is 280. I want to show you the uh, San Mateo Bridge. It's getting more wear and tear today and now there's a minor accident westbound on the shoulder, but there are more people on the San Mateo Bridge trying to get over to the peninsula uh, as uh, people are avoiding the Bay Bridge lines and 880 is going to be a little slow heading south but I'd still say it's a decent alternate route. Now let's go to Steve. All right actually yeah. we'll check in with Steve in yeah. just a moment but uh, we can tell you now we'll have more on this morning's massive fire in Oakland. That fire of course has led to commuter chaos on Bay Area highways so we've just learned the problems are going to continue until at least this afternoon. And workers are examining and working on the tracks right now. We'll give you a live look just ahead. Also, overnight gunfire leads to a manhunt in the East Bay. It is 7.30. Returning to our top story this morning, more on the BART shutdown. As Sal mentioned minutes ago, BART hopes to resume full service between Oakland and San Francisco by this evening. Now, a fire broke out near the West Oakland BART station about five hours ago. KTVS Kara Lou is in the fire zone as crews continue to water down the area. Good morning, Kara. Good morning. Well, we are here at 7th and Mandela here in Oakland, and this intersection just opened about a half an hour ago, but you can see the lights still aren't functioning correctly yet. It's creating quite a bit of confusion here. Now, if you look just beyond this intersection, you can see BART workers examining the tracks, doing what they can to get everything back on track. And if you take a look just behind that, that is the 880 freeway. You can see traffic is moving at a crawl morning commute again just a mess between oakland and san francisco here's why a massive fire earlier this morning it started just about a quarter after two you could see that firefighters were clearly aware of how close this was to the bart tracks in the west oakland bart station flames were shooting high into the air 
We've heard some estimates 150 feet into the air from firefighters, also a ton of thick black smoke. And what was on fire was a senior apartment complex that was under construction here near 7th and Mandela. The 120 unit project was in the framing stages. Investigators are looking to see if arson is to blame. Meanwhile, witnesses telling us the explosions they heard sounded like gunshots. About 2.20 this morning, I was asleep, and I heard a big old explosion, just boom, and uh, looked out my front door. I didn't see nothing. By the time I got back to the bed, I started hearing alarms and got back up again and just seen flames all just shooting straight up in the air. Again, no service, BART service, between Oakland and San Francisco right now. BART hoping to get everything up and running by this evening, but there's no service right now because this fire caused damage to insulators, communications, and electrical cables and equipment. And a lot of trains here in the East Bay are being turned around at the 12th Street station. BART saying, again, they're not sure how long service will be shut down, but hoping to get it up and running by this evening. BART recommending folks find another way to get across the bay this morning. We are also hearing of some problems and long lines at bus stations, so folks are just doing what they can to get to work on time. For now, we are live in Oakland. Carol Lou, KTVU, Channel 2 News. Sal, let's go to you. All right, uh, this morning's commute obviously is in bad shape. I want to show News Chopper 2 uh, the lines at uh, downtown Oakland BART stations, 12th Street. Uh, there's a line there. Apparently, there are some buses picking up people. And you saw earlier that also at 19th Street, Claudine was telling us that there are a lot of lines for people who would normally come to the BART station, and they're trying to figure out another way to get into San Francisco, including using AC Transit. Uh, I want to show you some video that we have here of uh, the tracks, of how close they are to the fire and the BART workers that were up there fixing it. Uh, they uh, have told us again that they hope to have all service restored by 5 o'clock this afternoon and partial service by early afternoon as they repair the insulators on the electric third rail. Let's move along now at 733. In fact, this is the only video we have. We're going to have another traffic update coming up. This is the wide shot here of the building right next to the BART tracks. It's 734 now. Let's go back to the desk. All right, and actually, Sal, I just checked BART's website, and they say they do want to mention that there is BART service still available in the East Bay and the West Bay. For example, Richmond to Fremont trains are running. On the Fremont to Daly City Line, trains from Fremont are turning at 12th Street at the Oakland City Center Station. Trains from Pittsburgh Bay Point also turning around at 12th Street, Oakland City Center Station. Trains from Dublin Pleasanton are turning at the Bay Fair Station, and trains from Millbrae, Daly City, and SFO are turning at the Embarcadero Station. And they're obviously just limited to the trains they have have on either side of the bay so service will not be on its regular schedule but you can still get around on BART you just cannot get across the bay. Right Tori and one of the things I want to mention is a lot of people are taking their cars over to the uh, peninsula mm. and then they're going to drive over to Millbrae and then from Millbrae you can take the train all throughout San Francisco stations and up to peninsula here and a lot of people will be taking the, bar, the, the train to the Colma BART station uh, to uh, get the shuttle to the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. A lot of people there's a day game today Tori the Giants and also the U.S. Open. So a lot of people need to get to the peninsula, and that's what they're doing. Yeah, all right. And uh, problems there on the San Mateo Bridge, as we could see on that map on uh, 92. All right, we will return to the fire scene throughout the morning for live updates. We will also post any new information about the fire, any changes in BART service. Sal just mentioned it will be resuming all BART service scheduled at 5 p.m. Also, how AC Transit is helping commuters this morning. That'll be on our website and also can be sent to your mobile device at ktvu.com. Our time is now 735. Overnight, a shooting in East Oakland injured two people. This happened about 11 o'clock last night at the Lockwood Gardens housing complex, 65th Avenue in East Lawn. Police say two people were standing in front of the apartments when shots were fired at them. Both victims were wounded at least once, but neither suffered life-threatening injuries. No arrests have been made. Police in San Jose investigating a stabbing attack. Police rushed to Mallard Court about 8.30 last night after getting reports of a fight. And when they got there, a 35-year-old man had been stabbed. He was later treated for serious injuries. Police say the attackers ran off. They are still on the loose. 7.36 this morning, San Francisco District Attorney George Gascon will formally announce the felony charges filed against the bicyclist who hit and killed a pedestrian. 36-year-old Chris Bacari is seen here in online video. He's facing a charge of felony vehicular manslaughter for running over and killing a 71-year-old man in the Castro District in March. 
Prosecutors have concluded that Bukhari was grossly negligent in the accident. I think juries in San Francisco are going to look at bicyclist behavior very, very seriously because they don't want to be hit by a bicycle and they don't want to be hurt, killed by a bicyclist. The cyclist ignited an uproar after the deadly accident. Bukhari reportedly posted a comment online saying it was a crowded sidewalk and he plowed through the, quote, least crowded spot he could find. He's now expected to surrender to authorities within the next two days.